Hi there, welcome to the Dan Lab. In this video, Lauren is teaching us how she grows Bacillus subtilis biofilms in 12 well tissue culture plates. So briefly, we're gonna start some LB cultures of Bacillus subtilis. Once those have grown up a bit, we'll use them to inoculate 12 well plates prepared with MSGG medium, which is a minimal medium, and a mesh insert. The mesh allows you to pick up the biofilm for sampling once it's grown. And then at the end of the video, we'll set up our biofilms to start growing. So we'll start by inoculating our LB cultures. For this, you'll need Bacillus subtilis struck for single colonies. We use LB plates grown overnight at 37C, labeled culture tubes, LB medium, and sterile wooden dowels. Make sure your culture tubes are appropriately labeled. We recommend starting two cultures. One is sufficient, but it's nice to have a backup. Using a serological pipette, aliquot three milliliters of LB per tube. Add antibiotics if needed. Here, Lauren is growing wild type Bacillus subtilis, so she won't be adding any antibiotics. Grab your LB plate. Note here that all the colonies look the same as we would expect. We want to use a few colonies for inoculation, so it's important to check for any signs of variation before you start. Holding your wooden dowel only by the very end, gather as much colony material onto a sterile stick as you can from about three colonies by lightly pressing along the top of the plate until you can see material gathered on the end of the stick. Transfer it to the LB of the culture tube, being very careful not to touch anything on the way down into the liquid, and swish it around to disperse the bacteria. You should be able to see colony material blobs floating in the LB. Then turn off your flame and put your tubes in the shaker at 200 RPM, 37 degrees Celsius, and incubate with shaking for two to two and a half hours. While cultures are growing, we'll prepare our 12 well plates. For this, you'll need sterile 12 well tissue culture plates, non-treated, a sterile 50 mil falcon tube, metal mesh pre-cut to fit into the wells of the plates and autoclaved. You'll also need forceps, a five mil pipette and tips, and a marker. Note that the meshes are essential for our metabolite extraction protocol. They're not essential for our lipidomics protocol. However, we still recommend using the mesh because it seems to facilitate biofilm growth. We've yet to determine why they support growth. We suspect that there's either a nutrient effect, an electron acceptor provided by the metal, or a role in scaffolding for the biofilm. Regardless, we recommend using them for whatever experiment you're doing in this manner. So to begin, unpackage your sterile 12 well plates, however many you're using. Don't open the lids, set them out on your bench. In the 12 well plate, the outer wells are good for biofilm growth, but the inner wells don't grow nice, reliable biofilms. We suspect there's a lack of aeration there. You can use the center wells as negative controls for growth, but we don't recommend using them for your experimental biofilms. So flame your forceps, then pick up one of the meshes by one of the side tabs, lift the plate lid and place the mesh in the well at an angle so all the meshes can fit without hitting one another. Replace the lid. Grab another mesh and repeat placing until all wells of the plate are filled. No need to flame your forceps between each mesh unless you violate their sterility. Lauren also places a mesh in one of the center wells as a negative control. If you drop a mesh, just move on. Do not flame the mesh. You can always re-autoclave unused or dropped meshes. So it's a good idea to prep a few extra meshes just in case. Label the place with strain names for each well. Here, Lauren is doing all wild type with negative growth controls, i.e. no inoculum controls in the center two wells. Next, add MSGG medium to all the wells. Grab a fresh sterile 50 mil falcon tube and pour an aliquot of MSGG from your stock bottle into the tube. 
and then work from this aleph line. Set a five mil pipette min and aliqua four and a half mils of MSGG to each well of the 12 well plate. You can use the same tip for all the wells until your aliquot runs out. One falcon tube aliquot does about 11 wells, just under one plate. Refill the falcon from the MSGG stock bottle, change your pipette tip and continue filling the wells. Repeat until all wells are filled. Next, we'll inoculate our biofilms. So for this, you'll need a spectrophotometer, cuvettes, P1000 and tips, 1.5 mil Eppendorf tube, a P20 pipette and tips, a Tupperware with a snap-on lid, labeling tape and a marker, and a 50 mil beaker, which you'll fill with water. After your LB cultures have grown, check the ODs using a spectrophotometer. ODs should be around 0.75, but the most important thing is that your cells are in log phase and haven't entered stationary phase yet. If your cultures look good and they're happily growing, next we'll use them to inoculate your MSGG wells for biofilm growth. Aliquot one mil of LB culture inoculum into an Eppendorf tube, Aliquotting to the smaller tube first makes it easier to maintain sterile technique since the culture tubes are very long and the P20 doesn't really fit into them well for sampling. Add six microliters of inoculum to each of the outside wells and leave the two middle wells uninoculated as negative controls. If anything grows in these, you know something is contaminated in your experiment. It's not visually obvious when a well has been inoculated, so use consistent patterns and track your progress carefully. Lauren counts aloud to make sure she doesn't lose track as she goes. Now that everything is inoculated, you just need to get your biofilms to the incubator. Transfer the 12 well plates gently to a Tupperware. Add a 50 ml beaker of water to maintain humidity in your Tupperware. Label with your name and lab information. Put your Tupperware in a clear spot in the 37C room. Make sure the lid is loosely set on and open the venting valve. Leave your biofilms to incubate at 37C. We expect wild type biofilms to begin to appear around 12 hours. 